Good evening and welcome to tonight's um, virtual open evening. We're just going to give it a few minutes just to let everyone that's booked in this evening join us. So if you just bear with us for a couple of minutes just while we let everyone come in. There's a few more people booked on that haven't yet signed in, I think. Let's see a few more people joining us now. So we'll just usually give it two or three minutes before we start just to make sure that everyone's had a chance to join us. Good evening. If you're just joining us, don't worry, your sound is working. We're just giving it a few minutes for everyone to join us this evening. Good evening, everyone. We're just waiting. We're just going to give it until three minutes past six to make sure that everyone that wants to join us has joined us. So don't worry if we're quiet for the first few moments. We don't want anyone to miss anything from the open evening this evening. Good evening, everyone who's just joining us. We're just going to give it one more minute and then we'll start. We just want to make sure that everyone's had their chance to get signed in because it's not always straightforward. <coughs> and there comes a few more people. Good evening, everyone. I think we'll start there and then hopefully anyone that joins us can come along and join in as we move forward through the evening. Good evening and welcome to Broomfield School's 2020 virtual open evening. Slightly different to how we would usually do open evening, but hopefully we'll give you a similar experience. Tonight's event will last about an hour and we aim to incorporate all the elements that you would expect a usual open evening. You'll get a chance to hear from my head teacher. Two of our pupils, Sita and Bessa, will be giving you a tour of Broomfield School on open evening. You'll discover what it's like to be part of the Broomfield community, be introduced to some key, to some key members of the leadership team. At the end of the evening, there'll be a great opportunity for you to ask any questions that you have. Please use the questions or the chat box, whichever is easiest for you, and type them into those. You can type them in throughout the evening as you think of things. So don't wait till the end, but then we'll pick them all up at the end and answer them then. I'm Miss Bignall, School Business Manager, and joining me this evening are Mr Travis, our Head Teacher, and hopefully he's going to give us a wave so you can see him on screen. Miss Seymour, our Deputy Head, there she is. Miss Caridis, uh, Assistant Head. Miss Mills, Assistant Head. Miss Fox, Assistant Head, and also our Senko. Miss Green, who's one of our associate assistant heads, and Miss Tansley, who is one of our achievement directors and particularly responsible for year seven and transition. We're now going to show you a short video to introduce you to Brimfield.
And I'm now going to hand over to our head teacher, Mr. Travis, to introduce himself. Good evening and welcome to Broomfield School and to our virtual open evening. We are here this evening to help you decide on the school for your children for the next five years. The choice of secondary school is, of course, a tremendously important decision, and we hope to show you that Broomfield School is the right school for your boys and girls. The choice of a secondary school is so very important that parents need to know as much as they reasonably can about the schools available to them. Now, the virus has made coming into school for open evenings and open mornings impossible. Yet, seeing a school for yourself is vital rather than just relying on hearsay and reputation. So, we have organised this virtual open evening to be as close as the real thing as is possible. We have a number of videos showing you what you would have seen had you been able to come in. We have a number of us speaking live so that you might pick up a sense of what we are like. And we have an interactive Q&A session at the end of the presentations. We expect the presentations and videos to take about 35 minutes before we move to the Q&As. And we've tried to strike the right balance between, on the one hand, not being too long, and on the other hand, not being too short, but you'll judge whether we've succeeded or not. So that sets the scene. Now let me tell you about Broomfield School. Our examination results are good. These days, you do not have to take a head teacher's word for a statement like that. You can look at the DFE School's comparison site. And if you go to this site, you will see a number of very important things about Broomfield. Firstly, our examination progress eight score is good and at the national average and compares favorably to other schools in Enfield and around us. The progress eight is the best measure of examination success parents have, have ever had, as it takes eight subjects, including English, math, science, and looks at the progress pupils have made at a secondary school or in their secondary school since they started in year seven. And in calculating this score, uh, the schools throughout the whole of the country are taken into account. Secondly, the comparison site will also show you that most of our pupils do what is called the English Baccalaureate, the EBAC. And that is a group of subjects. It, is English, mathematics, science, modern foreign languages, history or geography. And the EBEC is strongly recommended by the DFE, the Department for Education and Ofsted, because it is evidence that the school ensures that its boys and girls have a firm academic grounding that will stand them in good stead for their future studies, including university, and stand them in good stead for jobs beyond. This academic base is at Broomfield, then balanced with the option subjects such as music, drama, computing, religious education, physical education, media studies, and so on. Thirdly, the DFE website will also show you that 100% of Broomfield pupils left us after their examinations to go into further education, training, or employment. We prepared them well. Teaching at Broomfield School is good, and our teaching body is stable. We only had one teacher leave us at the end of the last academic year, and therefore we only ne needed one new teacher for the September start. We all know the difference that excellent teachers make to our learning. When I think back at the subjects I most enjoyed as a schoolboy, they were the, the, those subjects in which I really liked the teachers. We at Broomfield will not appoint teachers unless they are highly qualified, love their subjects, and love working with children. Behaviour at Broomfield School is good. We have a strong discipline code, a code that is based on reason and not rules simply for their own sake, so the pupils understand and appreciate them. 
and we have good systems in place to ensure that the pupils follow this discipline code. We will not tolerate low-level disruption to lessons. We will not tolerate bullying. And it is because we take a very clear and firm stance over bullying that there is very little bullying in our school. As a community, our pupils look after one another and we have a number of pupils who themselves are trained as anti-bullying mentors. At Broomfield, we encourage our pupils to grow into responsible adults. We encourage our young men and women to take responsibility for their lives and their learning and to stand on their own two feet. So we have positions of responsibility throughout the school from years seven to 11. We have house captains. We have form captains in each of the forms. We have an active and responsible school council and we have a prefect system in year 11. At Broomfield, we do not think it's sufficient simply to be well qualified. We want our pupils to have a good character and to be good people, to have courage and compassion, to stand up for what is right and to be resilient at times of difficulty and so on. In these ways, we reinforce the high and proper values and standards of behavior that you, you, the parents, insist on for your children. We are a small school and the governors intend us to stay that way. We currently, ha we currently have around 750 pupils. And because of this, we know each and every pupil and we are able to care for every boy and girl. No pupil is able to drift through school coasting and unknown or unhappy and alone, as might happen in one of the bigger schools. Our pupils at Broomfield School are happy pupils. Pupils feel happy if they are safe, if they get on well with one another, if they know they are developing in their studies and making good progress, if they make good friends, and if they like their teachers because they know and understand that their teachers care for them and want what is best for them, these are our pupils. So, to sum up our distinctive nature, we aim to educate the whole person. We want our boys and girls to leave our school, Broomfield School, excelling in a host of areas and to be well rounded individuals. It is our job to provide our pupils, your sons and daughters, with the very best education possible. We want every single pupil to excel. Our pupils are to reach their full potential in their academic work, their lessons, their study. Our pupils are to reach their full potential physically and in their sports. Our pupils are to reach their full potential in their social, spiritual and moral lives. This is our aim. And in this way, when your sons and daughters come to leave Broomfield School in five years time, they will be knowledgeable, intelligent, well qualified, highly skilled, virtuous and well rounded individuals able to play their full part in society. They will have been prepared and trained to get to get places in the best six forms, the best universities and the best careers, professions, jobs. They will be able to mix comfortably with people from all backgrounds, able to impress others and able to lead and to be role models for others. And we hope that uh, this evening you get a sense of our family atmosphere and that your sons and daughters, if they join us, will really matter to us at Broomfield School. So thank you for joining us this evening. Now, this concludes my address, but it's now time to meet others. Last week, our staff and pupils prepared Broomfield for its open evening. Classrooms were set up with activities, work was put on display, and staff and pupils gathered in subject areas. We want you to experience a full tour of the school as if you were here with us. So I will now hand you over to Sita and Bezhart, your tour guides for this evening.
Hello, my name is Sita. And my name is Bessa. And welcome to our open evening experience. And we're going to start first with maths. Okay, so I'm going to choose some numbers from here and you can only add, multiply, divide or subtract and you've got to try and get the target number. Okay, so off you go, I want to see the working out and I'm going to race you. I've got it, have you? Yep. Perfect. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so give it a go. I want you to try and get all the red frogs to where the purple frogs are. You can only jump over one at a time. Good. Alright, yep. can you identify as many shapes as you can with their names? Cube. Okay, go. Okay, hi. This is a sample of our exercise books, and uh, you've got TQ3. Every lesson begins with the lesson objectives, with the success criteria, with very little label there, with the title and the date, so the students not really wasting the time copying the lesson objectives and then you know we use a green pen to make sure that the student actually checking the work and so on and we've got a target sheet just at the front which obviously all the assessment is recorded there so it's just half termly uh, and there so we just monitor the progress of each student you can see that all the exercise books all that checked with the green pen and uh, you know that we, we put a lot of emphasis in the presentation for the uh, for the exercise books We are now going to go up to English. Hello, my name is Mr. Coyle. I'm head of English in Broomfield School. I want to share with you our vision behind the English curriculum. And that is basically to enhance a love of reading and writing in every single one of our learners. Over and above that, of course, we want our learners to be articulate in today's society and prepare our learners for the rigours of being ready for college, getting ready for the working world and the professional world beyond that. Our curriculum is exciting and engaging. and We bridge the work happening in year six into year seven by starting with the class reader called A Monster Calls. The students love this text and it's a great way in for them to understand the conventions and the structures of a reader, a novel. Over and above that, our Year 7 students will then enjoy a rich mixture of historically significant literature with also more modern, important texts that have helped shape modern cultures even modern thinking in today's world. I do think it's also really important to say that we've got a, a diverse curriculum and we, we do study literature from writers from across the world, empowering all of our students to feel represented in our own curriculum. And definitely what helps our Year 7 students settle into secondary life so much are the differentiated lessons so that every single learner succeeds. Why else does he stay in the room? Please, guys, let's give our ideas. They don't want to be. They don't want him to be in the same room with them because they think he's, he's different, therefore he's bad and shouldn't be with them. That's a strong answer. From the English corridor, we're going to go down to our brand new drama studio. physics. This includes theory and practical work. 
classwork or demo work. We offer a broad range of topics um, from space all the way through to chemical reactions. So this is what we need to learn about. What you do and it does it work, what happens, why the foam is being built. So it's acting like a catalyst, the hydrogen peroxide is, acting like a catalyst to speed up the reaction. Okay. This is called the pup test and you get hydrochloric acid and put it in the pipette. Put it into the test tube. Get a piece of magnesium, pour it on and hold it to contain the pressure. Get this. We have lunchtime clubs and after school clubs for the year sevens so they can use their scientific skills and practical skills in a broad range of experiments. So Ezekiel's going to light the paper and pop it in the conical flask. This will use up all the oxygen creating a vacuum, therefore sucking the air in the conical flask because there's more air pressure outside. Well done Ezekiel. And we're now going to hand over to Miss Seymour. Thank you, Sita and Basart, for touring us around the first part of the school. My name is Mrs Seymour and I am the Deputy Head. As a school, we follow the national curriculum through years 7 to 11. At Key Stage 3, this means pupils study all of the subjects you would expect, using highly specialist rooms and resources for science, technology, art and PE. This continues into Key Stage 4, where nearly all our pupils study the Department for Education's preferred GCSE pathway. That's the EBAC, the English Baccalaureate, which offers all pupils nine GCSEs in a wide spectrum of areas. Throughout all years, we provide a broad and balanced curriculum. We are a dynamic school and we are able to adjust quickly to change and the challenges of the modern world. Lockdown and COVID-19 has seen us develop our online teaching beyond the norm of many other schools, including teachers streaming live lessons from home into the classroom. At the start of lockdown, we quickly realised that not having a suitable device and internet connection at home would be a massive barrier to progress for some of our pupils. We quickly purchased 42 Chromebook, Chromebooks and 5G, which were distributed directly to those that needed them. Pupils are still using those devices at home for homework and more are being purchased for the New Year Sevens. These examples from lockdown mirror how Broomfield operates every day, assessing needs, prioritising pupils' educations and well-being, and ensuring that our budgets are spent in the most effective way to benefit all pupils. We are now going to rejoin Sita and Basart on their tour of our open evening. Did you know that the beehive on our school badge is because we have bees? Here's a picture of them. And now we're going to move to IT. Yeah, welcome to computing department. And uh, Anastasia, I'm going to teach you how to use microbit and how to detect whether you have sun rays inside the concert and shine. It does. Okay, if you take it away, it doesn't. Right, you want to try it? Yes. So this is Kodu, where you program your own game. Uh, so basically, you can use these coding buttons at the bottom to um, basically create a map. You start the game. You can use the WASD buttons to move your character around, and that space button to jump. And you press program, you have your program here, like keyboard, WASD, move. So what are you going to do is you're going to check whether the you've understood the cell address so you type in c4 yeah very good press enter and that shows you one can you try we're now going to go across the corridor to look at media hello welcome to 
to media. The media department is one of the most successful in the school. Students use the latest technology such as Photoshop uh, to create adverts, posters, as well as edit, editing their own films. Whilst Emanuela and Sumaya are taking pictures for their advertisement poster, the rest of the students are editing the photos for their advertisement posters as well. Creating an advertisement poster for this product, the DKNY lotion, and they're going to try to sell it so that everyone can buy this product. The only way they're going to do that is by taking a really, really good photo photograph and then by using Pixel LR editing app to edit the photos. We're now going to go upstairs to geography. Hello, welcome to geography. I'm Miss Anscombe, this is Mr. Chetty. Hi. Hi. Today um, we are looking at different buildings, their heights and also their names so the children are matching them. And then over here we're doing our map skills task where we are answering a number of questions using an ordnance survey map. Let's take a short walk down to history. History is a popular subject at Broomfield. We learn about a huge variety of wars, cultures, mysteries, murders, inventions, deceptions, explorers, evil dictators, kindly nurses and everything in between. It is a story like no other. In Key Stage 4, we follow, follow the Edexcel course. We study Elizabeth I, medicine through time, Weimar, Nazi Germany and the Cold War. All of this is rigorous preparation for a variety of A-levels, university courses and careers. Now we're going down to music. I'm very happy because now I get to show off my skill. You're now going to see a steel pan performance. Don't get confused, I have a timbrella. classroom. Welcome to PSHE and RE. In Key Stage 3 we have two hours across a fortnight for both of these subjects and you can choose RE as an option at GCSE. In RE we study thematically which means that we don't look at religions by religion by religion, we look at concepts and ideas and compare what the different religions say including those with no religion too, so everybody gets a voice. At PSHE, we look at the main key ideas of PSHE, which is living in a wider world, staying safe, mental well-being, and ensuring that we are all competent and happy individuals in the wider world. And now we're going down to a Spanish classroom. Okay, let's go. Hola, ¿cómo te llamas? Hola, me llamo Elis, ¿y tú? ¿Cómo? Eh, me llamo Yanis. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Muy bien. ¿Dónde vives? Vivo en la vida. ¿Y cuántos años tienes? Eh, tengo 13 años. ¿Y tú cuántos años tienes? Tengo 13 años. Ah, muy bien. Now we're off to the Arts and Technology Corridor. My name is um, Miss Morris, I'm Head of Art, Design and Technology at Broomfield. These are some wonderful sculptures that we made with our Year 7s, um, incorporating colour theory, um, hand building, mono printing, painting, all sorts. We had a ball making this project. So backwards and forwards, think about how you want to squeeze it because that stop, there it is. 
So, yeah, let's slow it down. There you go. Okay, you have your quick practice up here. Yeah. The students have practiced their donut icing, and now we're going to do it for real. Yeah. Three, two, one. Iso donut. Go. Donuts are made out of papier mache um, and then coated with just a normal paint. Okay, so uh, we've got some year eight students here and we are learning how to weave yarn and fabric. So we've got, we're using fabric strips and pieces of yarn. So the idea is we are using vertical lines and horizontal lines to create a grid effect. And we've made our own looms as well. And we want our, stick, our threads to be as close to each other as possible. We're also thinking about choice of colours as well. At Broomfield, we teach um, digital design um, through using 2D design. Um, this student is designing a keychain, which we'll be printing using our laser cutter. To technology. We've got some GCSE modelling and finished products, um, some year 10 mechanical toys and pewter casting work, and then at year 9 um, making a vacuum foam clock using the style of William Morris and the girls are going to do the vacuum forming. Hood up and then press the vacuum forming button. Whilst you've been busy watching our tour, we've been making a cake. Ah, oh, that smells lovely. Yeah. Moving on from the arts and technology department, we're going to be moving on to the PE department. Hello, my name is Miss Millen and I am Head of PE at Broomfield School. Pupils will take part in PE twice a week. We teach a skills-based curriculum through a variety of sports including football, netball, basketball, cricket, volleyball, table tennis, dance, gymnastics and athletics. We have a large extracurricular timetable and there are clubs for every sport that we offer through the curriculum. We also have a performance pathway for our most talented pupils to have the opportunity to train in school teams and represent the school in local and national sports competitions. Our aim is to provide all pupils with the skills necessary to be physically active in life. We want our pupils to enjoy PE and to value the importance of a healthy, active lifestyle. We hope you enjoyed our open evening tour. We can't wait to see you next year in Year 7. Oh, that's really cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm now going to hand over to Miss Fox. Miss Fox, we can't hear you. Let me just unmute you. Miss Fox, you need to unmute yourself, I believe. Good evening, I'm Mrs Fox, Assistant Head and Senko. As a school, we look to raise aspirations whilst ensuring that all pupils have access to a vast array of opportunities. We operate an extensive range of educational visits, always ensuring that they are the best value. Seeing performances at the Royal Opera House for £7.50. Geography field trips in Key Stage 4 at no charge and tapping into the wealth of opportunities that we have in London, along with the regular visits we make to Cambridge University. Each year group has an annual enrichment trip, which ensures that every pupil attends. A favourite of mine is joining Year 7 in the Woods to toast marshmallows during our overnight bushcraft residential. 
Year eight had the opportunity to go skiing and snowboarding on the slopes of Hemel Hempstead at the indoor snow centre. Year nine have visited Warwick Castle and we plan for this to become another residential trip visiting Shakespeare's Stratford-upon-Avon. Year 10 go to Thorpe Park. Yes, there are rides, but more importantly, a fantastic STEM fair hosted by Middlesex University. Year 11 share a celebratory road trip to France for the day after their mock exams. Here are some of our prefects to tell you more about Broomfield. And before I play that video, oh, excuse me, I just wanted to say, I think some people at home are having problems viewing the videos. If that is you, don't worry, we'll be uploading them to our YouTube channel tomorrow so you'll be able to watch them all at your leisure. But hopefully most of you are being able to experience it properly. everybody and welcome to Brunfield School. My name is Max and I am a prefect in year 11. My name is Karen and I am also a prefect. We are so pleased you have taken the time to visit our school, albeit virtually this evening. Being a pupil at Brunfield School is a great opportunity to better yourself and as a pupil and as a person, which I know from personal experience. When I arrived at Brunfield School in year 7, I was intimidated by all the buildings and having to cope with a significant change. Throughout my experience at this school, I am now confident and uh, focused. I come to school every day looking forward uh, to lessons and learning new things. From lessons to clubs and trips, Brunfield has provided me with so many opportunities. These experiences have not only grown in my confidence, but helped uh, strengthen friendships and made me really care about being a member of our school. For all of you year sixes watching this at home, I know that this might sound daunting, but coming to the school was one of the best decisions I've made in my life so far. At Brunfield, opportunities are created, potential is realised and excellence is achieved. Brunfield is a community and you'll become a part of that. Not only does my school uh, help pupils develop academically, but most importantly, it creates well-rounded, articulate and ambitious people. Good evening everyone. I would like to begin by saying a massive welcome to our prospect pupils who hopefully will be joining us next year. I remember when I first joined, I was quiet and shy. If at that point you had said in five years time I'll be standing here in front of you, I'd never have believed it. As prefects, we strive to be role models for all the younger peoples and make a positive difference to our school. I can't say it isn't nerve wracking moving to, to a secondary school because it is. Yet, in whatever school you decide to go to, there will always be, there will always be days where you have a little wobble and parents too. However, one thing I am proud to say that we have at Brimfield is an amazing team of staff who offer support and care. This ranges from a, a form tutor who sees you every day, giving you guidance and advice on everyday life about your school, your subject teachers who are also so approachable that if you don't understand a topic, they will take the time out of the day to explain, and a dedicated pastoral team who are always available for you to drop in for a chat and work through problems you may be experiencing. The most important advice I can give to you is to ask questions, however big or small they may be. Use the open evening tonight to ask all of your questions. I hope you are inspired to join our school. Thank you. We hope you enjoy all the videos that are presented this evening. And I hope you will enjoy the rest of your evening. Now I'm going to hand back to Miss Fox. Oh, Miss Fox, I think we've been You're muted. 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 Sorry, Miss Fox, I think I unmuted you at the same time as you muted yourself. Or unmuted yourself, even. <laughs> Can we start that one again? We will. Uh, usually at open evening, you have the opportunity to speak to pupils and staff, and we wish we could do the same tonight. Um, however, we can't, but we have created a video to give you an insight into what it's like to be part of the Broomfield community.
And am I muted? Let me just check. I am unmuted. Sorry about that. Um, we hope what you've seen thus far has given you a real feel for Broomfield and answered some of your questions, but we're sure that you probably have more. And we're all here for the next 10 minutes or so to answer any questions that you have. We particularly like getting questions from the year six pupils because they always are some of the best questions. And I will fill them out to our panel. Um, so let me see. Right then, so this question, I don't know, it might be one for Miss Fox, possibly. How developed is the music department and how important is it in the curriculum? Do pupils have access to music technology? And I'll let you unmute this time, Miss Fox. So um, we have a link with the Enfield Music Services and we aim to have every single year seven be able to access that and they can pick any uh, instruments from um, drums, there's guitar, there's vocals which is one thing we're looking into bringing in this year, uh, any wind instruments and the steel pans. Um, and then those groups go on. I know that Mr. Boys Layton, our new head of music, has started Music GC this year, which is bringing in music technology with that software being able to make your own music, both with that new technology as well. So, yeah. And the next question that we have is How do you support children who are working above expectations, please? Miss Seymour, do you think that's one you'd like to take? Would you like me to unmute you, Miss Seymour? There we go. Thank you. Yeah, we we um, rigorously monitor all students' attainment. So we look at the attainment of students when they arrive at the school. We target set and we monitor those targets to make sure that all students are working at or above their targets. So for students who are high achieving students, we ensure there are enrichment activities in all classes. We have um, enrichment subjects that go on out of school as well or, and that run in addition to the curriculum. So for example, in year seven, our students who have high levels of literacy are able to sit for a qualification in Latin and they will study Latin in year seven and year eight. Um, in, in year nine, some of our students sit qualifications in subjects such as IT before moving on to their GCSEs in year 10 and year 11. Um, also in IT, we have a number of students um, sitting computer science alongside the IT qualifications. Okay, and the next question is probably one that you might want to take, Miss Seymour, and some other staff might want to add into. Can I ask how you organise things during the lockdown period and what you are doing if the children have to learn from home due to COVID? So during lockdown, we very quickly made sure all our staff were skilled in Google Classroom, which meant that we could provide work tailored to each individual group and we have continued using Google Classroom. So if a student is at home because they've got to isolate at the moment, they can go on Google Classroom, they can access all the material for their lessons, they can complete the classwork material and they can post it back to their teacher on Google Classroom. Their teacher can look at the work, make comments and return it to them. So just as if they were experiencing the, the actual lesson going on. I don't know if anyone else wants to comment on that one. So, Miss Green, do you want to say anything about the pastoral side of things? I'll unmute you. Oh, you've muted your room. We're playing mute games. You need to unmute yourself, Miss Green. Sorry about this. There we go. Sorry. To go on from that, during lockdown, we um, were very conscious of our students being at home and we're very um, leading. Um, the, t the whole team on contacting every single student um, on a number of occasions throughout the period of time of lockdown to make sure that they they were safe, that their mental well-being was secure and that they were coping with all the work that was being provided. It's very important to us that the students are comfortable and happy and we provided every opportunity we could for them to share with us any concerns that they may have had 
and also from the parents point of view as well we were there for the parents to talk to us if they needed to on anything whether it be academic or on a pastoral level and we continue to do that now during the with the covid restrictions that we have in school presently and the next question i have in coming in might be one that miss tansy might want to take because it is are, uh is there a strong value and emphasis in the art subjects and extracurricular art? oh no that's art and music clubs and miss tansy would be good to answer on sport but extracurricular arts and music miss fox do you want to talk about that a bit <clears throat> Yes, uh, so we do run um, drama clubs, there's dance club which the PE department have taken on board this year which is running already and then along with the instrumental lessons the music department also is able to run guitar club, there is choir and these all lead up to performances that we do at uh, different points within the year so we've got the Christmas concert, we work towards school production so we did a really successful um, performance of Frankenstein last year. The art department also uh, building on all the different elements of art and technology and they're offering clubs as well for those pinpointed areas. I missed anything from the arts and no, I think okay. also we've had some art displayed at student art exhibitions and things, some of our GCSE work and the art department is always open for its GCSE pupils particularly when they're working on their portfolios for their GCSEs. Um, the next one I think I'm going to pass over to Miss Mills because it is are pupils taught in ability groups which subjects and from what age and Miss Mills is one of our maths teachers she's probably in quite a good position to answer that. Miss Mills I'll unmute you. Oh now we've now we're going through the muting game again. Let's see if you can unmute yourself now and I won't press anything. Miss Mills, are you there? No, we can't hear Miss Mills. I'm afraid, Miss Mills, we can't hear you. Oh, there we go. There we go, Miss Mills. Good evening, everyone. Um, well, in terms of your year sevens coming in, the first couple of weeks, we um, get to know your pupils. We get to know what their levels are like. We do some teacher assessment and some formal assessments. In the core subjects, we hope to set as soon as we can, because we know in primary schools that our, uh, your, your son's daughters are already in set. So um, within the first few weeks, as we are doing all these informal and formal assessments, um, they'll be in mixed ability groups, but soon to be setted. So for example, this academic year, we're setting straight after half term, once we've done some of our baseline testing for English, math and science. Thank you, Miss Mills. Um, and then the next question is probably Miss Seymour might be best to ask, uh, place to answer this. You mentioned some qualifications are taken early. Could you elaborate, please? Does this mean some GCSEs are taken early for high achieving pupils? We don't tend to put students in early for GCSE exams. We think that it is often better for students to be able to um, spend more time and uh, sit their GCSEs at the end of year 11. However, there are other qualifications such as the um, some of the BTEC qualifications which students can do um, and some of the Cambridge National Com um, qualifications which students can sit and we find that this helps them to stay engaged, helps them to step, helps them to become GCSE ready by preparing for exams in year nine. So, for example, um, this year we had students who sat an IT qualification uh, during year nine. It was a little bit disrupted with COVID, as I'm sure you're aware, but it, it meant that students were able to stay focused and experience what it's like to prepare for an exam in a subject before starting their GCSE exams. And the next question, I think I'll just answer that one, is do you offer art and music for GCSE? Yes, we always offer art. I can see Miss Fox nodding as well. We always offer art and music we have offered this year to our current year 10s. And we do, we look at the options that we offer to year 10 based on the cohort. So some years we may have a cohort that are very musically minded and there's a number of pupils that want to do it and another year we might not offer it because actually that cohort don't have that same interest and desire there 
So it does vary and we do look at each cohort to make sure that we're offering the right GCSEs for them. Let me ask Mr Travis a question because he's been sitting there quietly for far too long. What are the maximum class sizes, Mr Travis? I'm going to let you unmute yourself because otherwise I get into a ping pong. Or well, maybe I need to unmute you. There we go. Let's try that, Mr Travis. Thank you, Bert. You had to do. I don't. I think I lost total control there. So thank you for that. Um, class sizes. I suppose the average class size across the school um, would be about 24, 25. It, it can vary from subject to subject. For instance, in mathematics, a uh, strange subject that it is, they tend to uh, overfill the their top sets. So they may have up to 30 in a top set simply because they find that works best. All the pupils are very able, um, all of the same mind. And, uh, and really it helps learning. But as you move down the sets, then there'll be fewer and fewer. So in the bottom set, those who um, find math, maths uh, a little more difficult, there may be 15 or 16 in the set. Um, and uh, I, I think ma uh, mathematics is probably the extreme in, in having such a large number at the, the top. But usually within a subject, there is a range as you move through the uh, ability. Uh, but but I, I suppose, most top sets would be about 25. Thank you, Mr. Travis. The next question is one I think I'm probably best placed to answer. What is the update on the Powers Lane entrance? Will this be completed by next academic year? We have planning permission in at the moment. We're going through the early pre-planning with Enfield at the moment on that. So we are very hopeful that we will have it in place for September 2021. Obviously, COVID and all the other things did put a delay on things. Um, but we are still very hopeful that we will have that ready to go in September 21, if not before, if we can. Um, the next question is from um, a, a child, um, and I think it's probably best place to Miss Tansley. How many trampolines do you have? <laughs> oh, and we're playing mute you. There we go, Miss Tansley, if you unmute yourself, because I'm being annoying again. No. Oh, Miss Tansley, why can't we hear? Oh, there we go. There we go. Thank you. What a great question. Um, I'm so pleased to say that we have three trampolines at our school, and two of them are brand new. We've got two slightly small ones and one really really big one and you will have seen them in the open evening footage and that's going back up onto YouTube tomorrow so if you want to go back and have a look at those trampolines you can see them in our open evening footage on YouTube tomorrow and uh, the next question let's see if Mrs Caridis is still listening there uh, Miss Caridis are you able to take science as three separate subjects um, are you able to take sciences what was the question? Sorry, separate Sorry, That's a separate, separate subject. subject. Yes, you are. When you get to year 10, when you choose your options, you can take triple science. So you'll have biology, chemistry, physics. So you get your three scientific uh, exams at the end of year 11. If you don't, you've got combined, you still get two certifications, two qualifications. That's the combined science. But yes, we do offer triple science, yes. Thank you very much. All Ms. pupils will, will get at least two science GCSEs. All pupils, yeah. yeah. So all will get at least two, and those who are particularly keen can do the triple science, which means they get the, the biology, chemistry and physics. Okay, the next question is, would you consider longer residential trips abroad in this future scheme, perhaps, or to support learning languages to Spain? We were very, very disappointed. We had a trip going to Italy on a sports adventure tour at Easter 2020. As you can imagine, they didn't go. We were also planning our 2021 ski trip, which Miss Tansley was very keenly organising. But at the moment, we've put on hold because of everything else going on. So the answer to your question is, Yes, we are considering and we do want them to run. And yes, language trips as well are another thing on our list. Um, the next question is, do you ever have a Christian union or equivalent? 
Now, that's not something, a term I'm familiar with. I'm not sure if any of the rest of SLT are familiar with that, is it? I am familiar with it. There we go. I thought Mr. Travis yeah. might be. Um, we haven't, um, but but that is simply, I think, because the pupils themselves haven't uh, haven't asked for that. But I don't think there'd be any difficulty at all um, if the pupils come forward with a particular club or society that they want to put forward, then um, we, we usually can find a member of staff who would be interested in, in assisting with that. Um, we, we have, for instance, uh, had a prayer room, um, and, uh, but we haven't had a, a Christian society as such. But um, if the pupils want a Christian society, then we'll, we will consider putting one on. The next question is, how many different teaching groups might a year seven child be in after ability sets start, but while they're still settling in and making friendships? Miss Seymour, would you like to take that one? Can you unmute? I need to unmute you, I think. There we go. OK, can you hear me now? Excellent. Um, so in year seven, initially, students will be put into tutor groups and as Miss Mills has already said, they will stay in those tutor groups, possibly for the first half term as we begin to look at baseline testing. We then tend to set in the EBAC subject. So we will set in English, maths and science and in history and geography and possibly in languages. For subjects such as art, music, drama, PE, pupils will remain in their tutor groups usually so they will they will be in a mix of different types of groups depending on the subject that they are studying um, also for RE and PSHE students will probably stay in their tutor groups it, 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 it changes slightly each year depending on how we group the subjects together and the next question is probably for you as well Miss Seymour um, how many pupils need to be interested in music to enable GCSE music to run what is the threshold um, we started with quite a small group this year. We thought we were possibly going to have a music group of maybe between eight and ten students. But once a number of students found that we were offering music, we found that that number picked up. And I think we've currently got about 14 or 15 students studying GCSE music. But if we have, you know, we, we were committed to offering music this year and we would have run that group even with a group of maybe eight or nine students in. The next question is, what is your policy on phones in school? Our policy is that phones should not be seen or heard anywhere on the school premises. So the expectation is that if pupils choose to bring them to school, we know that some parents want their child to have a phone um, for the journey to and from school, then they need to make sure they're right at the bottom of their bag, turned off, and that we don't hear or see them during the school day. Um, do the Year 7s do computer? technology and media or is that later on in the school years um do you want to take that miss seymour i will do yes um certainly students learn computing and they start that in year seven media tends to be there is there is some media as part of the computing offer but media as a subject is something that students would opt for when they move from year nine to year ten Lovely. And I think what I'm going to do is I've got two more questions on here and I think I'm going to take those ones and then we will, um, I'll hand back over to Mr. Travis um, because I'm just conscious of everyone's time and we're now five minutes into um, over, but I, I wanted to make sure we get everyone's questions answered. So we've got one question, which is probably for you, Miss Seymour. Do form groups ever change or are they the same throughout? Um, form groups tend to stay the same throughout Key Stage 3. Um, the only reason that form groups might change is if we had a um, large influx of students and we needed to put in an extra form group, which has happened in previous years. Um, in Year 10 and Year 11, we use um, we use the form time slightly differently. So in year 10 and year 11, there may be changes to form groups depending on the subjects and the strengths of the students within each subject. And the final question, which is always my favourite one, and I'm glad we've had this one, is, and I think I might take that question, is what is a typical school day, start times, breaks, school end, and also how much does the canteen work? And that's come from a year six pupil. 
because they always have their priorities very clear. So school starts in normal times, I'm going to talk about because everything's a bit different because of COVID. But in normal times, um, school starts at 8.30 with registration of 25 minutes. Then there are two one hour lessons, followed by a 20 minute morning break, then another hour lesson then an hour of lunch and then another two one hour lessons in the afternoon taking you to 3 15. Um, the canteen works using parent pay and thumbprints and is open usually for breakfast so you can get beans on toast and a hot chocolate and meet your friends at the start of the day it's open at morning break which is probably the most popular time because you can pick up cheese on toast and also if you've got a club or you want to stay up by the table tennis or the football you can pick up a sandwich and then again, it's open at lunchtime where we serve a variety of hot meals and again, sandwiches, bagels, baguettes and anything else you can imagine. When I used to do that, well, when I have done tours around the school and you ask the pupils what the, the best thing about Broomfield, often they answer the food. So that is probably a very good um, sign. Um, if that is it from everyone, we've got a few people saying thank you. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I'm just going to hand you back to Mr. Travis. Yes, thank you. Thank you for those questions. Um, really interesting questions. Thank you. And thank you very much for joining us this evening. We hope that you found our virtual open evening informative and enjoyable. And we also hope that technology has been kind to you. Many of you, um, or a number of you, will have, I, I believe, joined us on one of our roadshow events. Um, but if you haven't, we would recommend that you, you join us on one of those also. These are less formal than this evening. Um, they're hosted on Zoom, and they give you the chance to ask, uh, well, to discover more about Broomfield and to ask any other questions that you might not have had chance to answer this evening. Um, we've had, we're delighted to say, some very positive feedback about the roadshows. So um, if you're interested, details are on the website. And uh, also, if you want to keep up to date with what is happening at Broomfield School, please follow us on Instagram and, and Facebook and uh, I think the other social media as well. Yes, YouTube. We hope to see you in September. Uh, we'd love to see you in September. But from all of us here, um, and for those um, at, at school who have helped us to create the videos, we wish you all the very best and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Good night.